Welcome to today's episode of Cover to Cover. I'm going to play the 30 second countdown now. Let's share the link. Were you able to share the link? Whatever you answered, that's the same answer as me. <laughs> I wasn't able to share the link. Uh oh. This is what Sonia does that I chide her. I'm like, Sonia, you shouldn't come here yawning. That doesn't make us excited for God's word this morning. Anyways, I've shared the link now. Today we are going to be reading John 5. And I will share my screen so that we can use the message. even on the Sabbath. Chapter 5 Soon another feast came around and Jesus was back in Jerusalem. Near the Sheep Gate in Jerusalem there I apologize for that glitch. I was just presenting and my laptop went off. I apologize for that glitch. Let's do this. Let's start again. Even on the Sabbath. Chapter 5. Soon another feast came around and Jesus was back in Jerusalem. Near the Sheep Gate in Jerusalem, there was a pool, in Hebrew called Bethesda, with five alcoves. Hundreds of sick people, blind, crippled, paralyzed, were in these alcoves. One man had been an invalid there for 38 years. When Jesus saw him stretched out by the pool and knew how long he had been there, he said, Do you want to get well? The sick man said, Sir, when the water is stirred, I don't have anybody to put me in the pool. By the time I get there, somebody else is already in. Jesus said, get up, take your bedroll, start walking. The man was healed on the spot. He picked up his bedroll and walked off. That day happened to be the Sabbath. The Jews stopped the healed man and said, it's the Sabbath. You can't carry your bedroll around. It's against the rules. But he told them, the man who made me well told me to. He said, take your bedroll and start walking. They asked, 
Who gave you the order to take it up and start walking? But the healed man didn't know, for Jesus had slipped away into the crowd. A little later, Jesus found him in the temple and said, You look wonderful. You're well. Don't return to a sinning life or something worse might happen. The man went back and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. That is why the Jews were out to get Jesus, because he did this kind of thing on the Sabbath. But Jesus defended himself. My father is working straight through, even on the Sabbath. So am I. That really set them off. The Jews were now not only out to expose him, they were out to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was calling God his own father, putting himself on a level with God. What the father does, the son does. So Jesus explained himself at length. I'm telling you this straight. The son can't independently do a thing, only what he sees the father doing. What the father does, the son does. The father loves the son and includes him in everything he is doing. But you haven't seen the half of it yet. For in the same way that the Father raises the dead and creates life, so does the Son. The Son gives life to anyone He chooses. Neither He nor the Father shuts anyone out. The Father handed all authority to judge over to the Son, so that the Son will be honored equally with the Father. Anyone who dishonors the Son, dishonors the Father. For it was the Father's decision to put the Son in the place of honor. It's urgent that you listen carefully to this. Anyone here who believes what I am saying right now and aligns himself with the Father, who has in fact put me in charge, has at this very moment the real, lasting life and is no longer condemned to be an outsider. This person has taken a giant step from the world of the dead to the world of the living. It's urgent that you get this right. The time has arrived. I mean right now, when dead men and women will hear the voice of the Son of God, and hearing will come alive. Just as the Father has life in Himself, He has conferred on the Son life in Himself. And He has given Him the authority, simply because He is the Son of Man, to decide and carry out matters of judgment. Don't act so surprised at all this. The time is coming when everyone dead and buried will hear His voice. Those who have lived the right way will walk out into a resurrection life. Those who have lived the wrong way, into a resurrection judgment. I can't do a solitary thing on my own. I listen, then I decide. You can trust my decision because I'm not out to get my own way, but only to carry out orders. If I were simply speaking on my own account, it would be an empty, self-serving witness. But an independent witness confirms me, the most reliable witness of all. Furthermore, you all saw and heard John, and he gave expert and reliable testimony about me, didn't he? But my purpose is not to get your vote and not to appeal to mere human testimony. I'm speaking to you this way so that you will be saved. John was a torch, blazing and bright, and you were glad enough to dance for an hour or so in his bright light. But the witness that really confirms me far exceeds John's witness. It's the work the Father gave me to complete. These very tasks, as I go about completing them, confirm that the Father, in fact, sent me. The Father who sent me confirmed me, and you missed it. You never heard his voice. You never saw his appearance. There's nothing left in your memory of his message because you do not take his messenger seriously. You have your heads in your Bibles constantly because you think you'll find eternal life there. But you miss the forest for the trees. These scriptures are all about me. And here I am, standing right before you, and you aren't willing to receive from me the life you say you want. I'm not interested in crowd approval. And do you know why? Because I know you and your crowds. I know that love, especially God's love, is not on your working agenda. I came with the authority of my Father, and you either dismiss me or avoid me. If another came, acting self-important, you would welcome him with open arms. How do you expect to get anywhere with God when you spend all your time jockeying for position with each other, ranking your rivals and ignoring God? But don't think I'm going to accuse you before my Father. Moses, in whom you put so much stock, is your accuser. If you believed, really believed what Moses said, you would believe me. He wrote of me. If you won't take seriously what he wrote, how can I expect you to take seriously what I speak? Bread and fish for all.
All right. Praise God. Don't forget to leave a like here on YouTube, even on Facebook. Yeah. This passage is really, really amazing. John 5. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word that we're listening to this morning. We pray in the name of Jesus that this word will profit us. We will not just be hearers and then go away and do nothing. But let this word profit us, to God. In the mighty name of Jesus, let this word bear fruit in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right, let's start from John 5. What are your thoughts concerning John 5? Now, this first, <laughs> this first scripture here is so fantastic. The pool of Bethesda. Oh, it has five a cloves. Five a cloves is like, um, I don't know, where five things meet, five rivers meet. Anyways, people come here and, you know, they wait for the angel to stir this water. Sheep gate is also peculiar because it's not a wolf gate it's a sheep gate it's for children of god so they wait to be healed and now this man was an invalid for 38 years now i don't know was he at this pool for 38 years waiting for his day or he had been an invalid for 38 years and was just just happened to be at this pool at this time but i know the popular one is that he had been at this pool waiting for the angel to stir the waters i have been in the corridors of waiting and i know that waiting is crazy waiting is like oh god you don't know when what you're expecting is going to happen and you're just trusting you're just so full of faith you're just like oh god when when jesus when so here was this man 38 years this is like somebody's lifetime some people don't even live this long Jesus asked him, do you want to get well? I'm sure he might have thought this was sarcasm. You, like, you've been here this long. Are you sure you're, you're here for real? Or are you sure this is legit? And then he's like, you know what? Sir, I don't have anyone to put me in the pool. So whenever I see it being stayed, by the time I get there, someone else is in there. He was explaining he was explaining his situation. How many times are we compelled to explain our situation? The reason I'm fat is not because I don't want to lose baby weight. It's because, you know, I needed to take in extra calories because I wasn't getting sufficient milk. And when I took the calories, I couldn't somehow not lose it. My appetite is growing, maybe because I'm still nursing. How many times do we feel when people make comments or people say something, we are compelled or we just want to explain ourselves? I, I challenge us, let's quit the explanations. Yeah. It's good, well, if we want to, but it's best if we just do what Jesus said. Get up, take your bedroom and start walking. In my case, or in the first example of the person trying to lose weight 
from after giving birth is just start doing 10,000 steps a day. Start walking literally. <laughs> and in, in anybody's case, just take the step of faith in the direction you want to be. That is God's word for us. I remember my husband preached this message to me. I was telling him that my music would have gone far, but I don't have a sponsor. I don't have anyone that is saying, here, here is 15 million. Use this to promote your music. And I say 15 million naira then directly because I think that was like, no, no, no. I'm sorry. 15,000 USD, which was about, I don't know. Yeah. I think 15,000 USD. So I contacted a promoter, the person that helps promote Mercy Chingo. And I was like, hey, you made this um, Jesus, you love me too much. You're so popular. How can you help me make maybe one of my songs a hit? And he's like, bring 15,000 only, one five USD. And I'm going to make sure that your song is on every lips. I'm going to promote it. I'm going to do what we do. That it did cost him an initial investment of 15,000 USD. Okay, maybe 15,000 USD in Canadian would be how much? Maybe 20, almost 20,000 Canadian. But would I have that money somewhere? I could. The Lord could just, here you go, baby girl. 20,000 years just for your music. Don't use it for anything else, just for your music. Just put it in there. Good. Give the promoters, let it be played in Australia and in Switzerland, everywhere. Anyways. I was telling my husband, I have nobody. And he said what to me? Get up your bed and walk. Don't wait for nobody. Don't wait for somebody. Don't wait for anybody. Just take steps in the direction you want to go. And I thank God because God is showing up, has shown up, is still showing up. And we know we still have room to cover, but definitely we are not small. Definitely we're not where we used to be. You know how they say that thing? I'm not, I might not be where I want to be, but I'm definitely not where I used to be. So I challenge all of us, take up your bed and walk. Amen. And as we do that, we find out that we are healed. Jesus, the healer, is there. When we have God on our side, we are the majority. We don't really need anyone, somebody. <laughs> How's that? Who, buddy? <laughs> we just need God. There is this song we used to love singing then. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. All we need is Jesus. All right, then, of course, the Pharisees had quarrels with the man because it was a Sabbath thing. So some people always have it. They miss the main point and just pick on something that is insignificant and just be like, hey, it's good that this is, but, but they should have. It's bye-bye to the naysayers. Let's not, because this man was sick for 38 years, for goodness sake, and he's walking, he's well, and all they notice is that, hey, it's a Sabbath, he's breaking the Sabbath rules of not carrying a mat. This is how people, my husband would say, they are gifted in the, <laughs> let me, my, Pastor Moses would say, they are gifted in the in the ministry of misunderstanding misunderstanding. They are gifted in the in the gift of misunderstanding. <laughs> it's the Sabbath. It's against the rules. He's like, hey, the man who made me well is the one who said, I'm sorry, if you have any issues, go talk to him. And guess what? The guy didn't even know it was Jesus. Because after Jesus did it, he just slipped in the crowd and left. Means 
sometimes let's not wait to be recognized after we've done something. Sometimes I'm like, but I did this for this person. I did this for this person. They should love me for life. No, sometimes they don't even remember your name. So if this man, after being healed for, after being sick, you know, after being healed from a 38 year issue, he doesn't even know the name of the person who healed him. Ah, let's do better better me i have to do better i have to remember names and dates and peoples and places and you know times it's important uh, this one didn't even know jesus name then jesus found him and was like hey you you look great you look wonderful according to the message don't return to a singing life or something worse might happen now this is so key I know people always, I always say I grew up in a legalistic background and I know we love speaking about the grace, grace, grace of Jesus is there and the blood of Jesus will always cover our sins. But look here, don't return to a life of sinning or something worse might happen. Means what? What does this mean? <laughs> it means that sometimes when we sin, we open the door for evil into our lives. So right now, God will repent of anything that might give the devil a foothold. The Bible says something, he that breaks the hedge, serpent bites. And one thing I found out for some like me to whom much is given, much is expected. I saw someone and I find this deviant change. I said, this is a perfect, this is like the word of God. And if these people who are not like Christians in court are doing this, how much more means? Why do I show kindness to only those who are kind to me? Greet people, who, even people you think are not kind back. So that's what I did. So, yeah. So I was talking about sinning here. So sinning might be something like that. For us Christians, we are held to a higher standard. Sinning might be just that bitter thought in your heart. The, mm, that uh, sound in our heart. Sinning might be mm, like some people. I don't know what you people think about this. But maybe I shouldn't talk about it because it's going to take us off a tangent. But some things are sin to some people. Do you know? It's not a sin, sin, like in the word of God, the Bible says, thou shalt not know. It's just a sin to some people because that is how you were brought up. And in your heart, you know, you feel it's wrong. And yet you, you do it. So mm -hmm. that's a sin. That's a sin. Even though the Bible does offer grace and says, if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts. But sometimes we just still, you know how we say here in cover to cover, the heart of the matter is a, is a matter of the heart. So you need to check your heart because it's in your conscience. It's there that the Holy Spirit is whispering to you what is right and what is not right. So Lord, right now, let's take this opportunity to confess and you know repent of any sin. Let's take a minute and just pray that prayer. Father, we repent of any sin we are indulging in, God. Even if it's sin of gluttony, even if it's sin of, you know, pride, jealousy, envy, anger, malice, anything in our hearts, whatever is that thing for us, oh God, please, God, we confess to oh God. Even if it's sin of, like, listening to secular music when we know we should be reading the word, whatever is sin, God, we pray. Have mercy, oh God. Forgive us. We are blood washed. We stand behind the blood of Jesus and we come into your throne and we ask for mercy, oh God, and grace for help in our time of need. Lord, we do not return to our sins, oh God. Father, we thank you, oh God, for washing us clean. In Jesus' name, amen. It says, don't return to a sinning life or something worse may happen.
So we need to hear this because sometimes we're like, oh, sin, sin is nothing. But if we go back to a sinning life, uh, something worse might happen. God help us in the name of Jesus. The Bible says affliction will not return a second, will not arise a second time. We don't want evil to come near our doorsteps. So we have to not give the devil a foothold. We have to not break break the hedge. We have to constantly watch our step. We have to constantly keep in step with the spirit. We have to constantly live the way God expects us to live. And, you know, even more so for those of us that come to cover to cover, you know, regularly, God expects more from us. I am sorry. And sometimes I do feel this, but we know much more. To whom much is given, much is expected. We, we should do better because we know better. God help us in Jesus' name. It's not going to be by power. Let me not scare us. It's not going to be by might. But the Spirit of God will empower us to live this life, this God life. Praise God. The man went back to the Jews, okay? And then he said it was Jesus. Hey! Now, those people were very mad at him. So guess what? They were already mad at him and he kept provoking them the more. So my father is working through the Sabbath, so am I. You know, that means that when God is our father, we are on the same level with God. In Christ and verses, they say the same class as God. Mm, I don't want to lie like nothing. <laughs> the same, this thing is the God class, that we are in the God class. That they used to say this a child of a dog is a dog, a child of a lion is a lion, the child of God is what that's what they say. But this is what the, uh, uh, the, the Pharisees were also concerned that if he says God is his father, then he's putting himself on the same level with God. That's where we are. But we are not walking around and like, I'm a God, I'm a God, I'm a God, I'm a God. Well, you can walk around like that if it makes you feel happy. But we're not walking around like that out of pride. Even if we are prideful, we are boastful. According to Paul, we boast that we know him. Let anyone that boasts, it's not Paul that said that in the Old Testament, it says, let anyone boast that boast, boast that he knows me. So let our boastings be in God, our Father. Praise God. And then he keeps talking about his Father. And how God has put him in charge. And this is And
to apologize. I just realized that our network had taken me out. I was speaking to you guys. I where did I even stop? Where did you hear? Well, last because I was about to share a song about. So this is what I was sharing. I was a. Uh, Hmm, that was a liar. I just had to reconnect my network again. I know. It's amazing. I think we have to change to like 5G or something like that. And I'm just going to still share this song. Thank you for the like on Facebook. We see you. Thank you. You guys are amazing. So I was saying about... Um, I'm going to share that song. Uh, Drive Wings. Yes. It has gone off again. Okay, today is June 1st. Please say your name and spell it. I'm God, G-O-D. Take my troubles, breathe life into this skin. You call me by name, raise me to life again. You can calm the oceans, speak peace into my soul. Take me as I am, awaken my heart to beat again. Oh, oh Jesus, oh, oh Jesus, oh, oh Jesus, alive in me. Set the captives free as I stand and sing. You're breaking the chains of me. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh, oh Jesus. Jesus, oh, oh, 
Jesus alive in me. Yeah, Jesus is alive in us. Praise God. I was just talking about um, verse um, 25 when the man, you know, we're talking about Jesus was saying something about dead men will hear the voice. Dead men and women, this one, when dead men and women will hear the voice of the Son of God and will come alive. So when God is alive in us. You know what I mean? We come alive. We come alive because if the same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead is in us, it will quicken our mortal bodies. So we are coming alive. I'm coming alive. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, yeah. And then Jesus kept going. Um... Mm -hmm. He said it again. When everyone dead and buried will hear his voice, those walk out into a resurrection life. I know resurrection is not just when you die because Jesus said, because um, and Martha was telling Jesus that day, I believe on the last day he will resurrect and everything. He said, no. I am the resurrection and life. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. So you don't have to wait until you die to you before you come alive, before you have that resurrection life flowing in your veins, in your arteries. <laughs> don't know why they use veins, but maybe that's when they see. But in your arteries, in everything in you, that life is in us. And so this is, I loved this, this part that we are going to walk into the resurrection life. Hallelujah. So Jesus was like, I'm, I'm not acting on my own. So that is how we should live our lives. If Jesus bought you with a price, you are not to act on your own. You are supposed to act out of instruction, out of direction, out of our steps being ordered. So, and then he now speaks about testimonies about himself, that John was a blazing light, blazing and bright. So let's see our lives as light. So we are here in this generation to offer our light and people should dance in our light. So you dance for an hour or so. <laughs> wow. Said, but yeah. Even if we believe John, but what I took out from there, even though I'm not explaining everything he said, it's just that a life can be a light. A life is a light. And we are a light to light up our world, to light up our generation. And then we even offer people, you know, we can be like those lights in the in the in the in the dance party <laughs> where we give people light so that they can they can express themselves. That is what Jesus said here about John. So John was a touch blazing and bright and you were glad enough to dance for an hour or so in his bright light. Praise God. Praise God. So let us go out and be light. But then we shouldn't wait for people to approve us because yeah, John verified him. You know, I, I, was, I was just reading up how to get my Instagram verified that this is the real Hefzibar. So people know this is me. So you have that blue check. Everyone wants to be verified. Everyone wants to be endorsed. Everyone wants to be, um, um, what's another word? <laughs> you have to just, someone has to vouch for you that this is legit. This is good. This is true. This is real. And even though John did that, he said, you know what? I'm not interested in crowd approval. Mm. Should I not ask in Instagram to verify me? <laughs> I'm just teasing. I'm just saying. But me, most important thing is let's be careful the way we want people to endorse and approve us. So Jesus said here, because I know you and your crowds. Okay. Today they love you. Next day they don't love you. I was just looking at the internet. I don't know. One of the celebrities is going through some fire from the press. And you know when the press is out for someone, they are just going to... Like, 
no mercy. They take no captives. They kind of eat the person raw. So he, that's what Jesus is saying. So, and even look at Jesus. One day, heal him. Next day, crucify him. So we can't really be waiting for people, public approval. So, but he said, you know what? I'm here on God's approval. And we should stop ranking our rivals. Uh, this one seems better than me. That's in my case. Or I don't know. Come on. Yesterday, I was talking to someone. She said, oh, this church, I used to go there, but it's all a fashion show. We all just go there to just show off our latest clothes. I'm like, what? Who doesn't love a fashion show? Man, go there even if it's for the fashion show. Because she, she doesn't go to the church anymore. In fact, she doesn't go to church right now. So I'm like, let's go for the fashion show. But look, Jesus is also mentioning this. We rank our approvals and ignore God. Mm. Hallelujah. Hope I'm still on. Okay, I'm still on. And he said, if you believed in Moses, Moses? Moses, not Pastor Moses, because Moses spoke about him. Wow, hallelujah. I'm done with chapter five. Let me go to the comment section. Thank you, everybody. Right, Dr. Brown, praise God for yet another glorious day. We are most grateful, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much, Dr. Crown. Always nice to see you in the comment section. The law of solid ground. Jesus' credibility came from results. John 5, 1 to 14, when the Jews confronted Jesus after he healed the man on the Sabbath, he replied, he was working only because his father was working. <laughs> yeah, no, then Sabbath is so important. They could stone someone to death for breaking the Sabbath. But yeah, Jesus was just violating their rules. But he was like, I'm doing something good on the Sabbath. Can't you see this? Anyways, in other words, Jesus' credibility came from results, not a rhetoric. Leaders practice the law of solid ground when their lives back up their words. Amen. Our lives will back up our words. That's Samaria Sake. Hi, everybody. Happy Sunday. Lady Kika says, hello. Hi, Lady Kika. And then um, Pastor says, oh, Lord, help me do better and not demand uh, you know, recognition after helping people, man, me, Ashmeri, that's my prayer because sometimes I'm like so angry after I did this, they can't even, oh no, this is my prayer as well, I'm with you on that prayer, I'm with you, <laughs> Lady K says, this is your network, yes, I know, uh, bind it in Jesus' name, network work, you're called network, not net fail, <laughs> so <it> better work, <laughs> And then a lady K says, I was happy to see your pretty face though, frozen. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lady K. Hugs. Yeah, Kawa says, Pastor Mary says, Kawa, you look gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. Ikika says, right. Ikika <laughs> says, are you ready for church? Yes, yes, I'm ready. I'm ready. And she says, Jesus alive in me. Yes, Jesus is alive. Dry bones come alive. Amen. Amen. Who doesn't love a fashion show? Yeah, that's me. I'm like, you know what? Let's get into it. Mm -mm. Roll up my sleeves. Um, let's dress. We're going to church. <laughs> because I don't really dress up to anywhere, right? So we might as well. <laughs> yes. Network, not network. Network, not net feel like Kate. So true, so true. Beautiful. No, you guys in the comment section always warm my heart. Thank you. Please keep it coming. God bless you. Really appreciate for you taking time to be with me here on a Sunday morning. It ain't easy. Also on a Sunday morning where we did the fallback. <laughs> All right, chapter six quickly because it's almost time for church. Bread and fish for all. Chapter six. After this, Jesus went across to the Sea of Galilee. Some call it Tiberias. A huge crowd followed him 
attracted by the miracles they had seen him do among the sick. When he got to the other side, he climbed a hill and sat down, surrounded by his disciples. It was nearly time for the feast of Passover, kept annually by the Jews. When Jesus looked out and saw that a large crowd had arrived, he said to Philip, Where can we buy bread to feed these people? He said this to stretch Philip's faith. He already knew what he was going to do. Philip answered, Two hundred silver pieces wouldn't be enough to buy bread for each person to get a piece. One of the disciples, it was Andrew, brother to Simon Peter, said, There's a little boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but that's a drop in a bucket for a crowd like this. Jesus said, Make the people sit down. There was a nice carpet of green grass in this place. They sat down, about five thousand of them. Then Jesus took the bread and, having given thanks, gave it to those who were seated. He did the same with the fish. All ate as much as they wanted. When the people had eaten their fill, he said to his disciples, Gather the leftovers so nothing is wasted. They went to work and filled twelve large baskets with leftovers from the five barley loaves. The people realized that God was at work among them in what Jesus had just done. They said, This is the prophet for sure, God's prophet right here in Galilee. Jesus saw that in their enthusiasm they were about to grab him and make him king. So he slipped off and went back up the mountain to be by himself. In the evening, his disciples went down to the sea, got in the boat, and headed back across the water to Capernaum. It had grown quite dark, and Jesus had not yet returned. A huge wind blew up, churning the sea. They were maybe three or four miles out when they saw Jesus walking on the sea, quite near the boat. They were scared senseless, but he reassured them, It's me. It's all right. Don't be afraid so they took him on board. In no time they reached land, the exact spot they were headed to. The next day, the crowd that was left behind realized that there had been only one boat and that Jesus had not gotten into it with his disciples. They had seen them go off without him. By now, boats from Tiberias had pulled up near where they had eaten the bread blessed by the master. So when the crowd realized he was gone and wasn't coming back, they piled into the Tiberias boats and headed for Capernaum, looking for Jesus. When they found him back across the sea, they said, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, You've come looking for me not because you saw God in my actions, but because I fed you, filled your stomachs, and for free. The Bread of Life Don't waste your energy striving for perishable food like that. Work for the food that sticks with you, food that nourishes your lasting life, food the Son of Man provides. He and what he does are guaranteed by God the Father to last. To that they said, Well, what do we do then to get in on God's works? Jesus said, Throw your lot in with the one that God has sent. That kind of commitment gets you in on God's works. They waffled. Why don't you give us a clue about who you are, or just a hint of what's going on? When we see what's up, we'll commit ourselves Show us what you can do. Moses fed our ancestors with bread in the desert. It says so in the scriptures. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus responded, The real significance of that scripture is not that Moses gave you bread from heaven, but that my Father is right now offering you bread from heaven. The real bread. The bread of God came down out of heaven and is giving life to the world. And they jumped at that. Master, give us this bread now and forever. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. The person who aligns with me hungers no more and thirsts no more, ever. I've told you this explicitly because even though you have seen me in action, you don't really believe me. Every person the Father gives me eventually comes running to me. And once that person is with me, I hold on and don't let go. I came down from heaven not to follow my own whim, but to accomplish the will of the one who sent me. This, in a nutshell, is that will that everything handed over to me by the Father be completed, not a single detail missed, and at the wrap-up of time, I have everything and everyone put together, upright and whole. This is what my Father wants, that anyone who sees the Son and trusts who He is and what He does and then aligns with Him will enter real life, eternal life. My part is to put them on their feet, alive and whole at the completion of time. At this, because He said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. The Jews started arguing over him. Isn't this the son of Joseph? Don't we know his father? Uh, Don't we know his mother? How can he now say, I came down out of heaven and expect anyone to believe him? Jesus said, 
Don't bicker among yourselves over me. You're not in charge here. The Father who sent me is in charge. He draws people to me. That's the only way you'll ever come. Only then do I do my work, putting people together, setting them on their feet, ready for the end. This is what the prophets meant when they wrote, and then they will all be personally taught by God. Anyone who has spent any time at all listening to the Father, really listening and therefore learning, comes to me to be taught personally, to see it with his own eyes, hear it with his own ears from me, since I have it firsthand from the Father. No one has seen the Father except the one who has his being alongside the Father. And you can see me. I'm telling you the most solemn and sober truth now. Whoever believes in me has real life, eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna bread in the desert and died. But now, here is bread that truly comes down out of heaven. Anyone eating this bread will not die, ever. I am the bread, living bread, who came down out of heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live, and forever. The bread that I present to the world so that it can eat and live is myself, this flesh and blood self. At this, the Jews started fighting among themselves. How could this man serve up his flesh for a meal? But Jesus didn't give an inch. Only insofar as you eat and drink flesh and blood, the flesh and blood of the Son of Man, do you have life within you. The one who brings a hearty appetite to this eating and drinking has eternal life and will be fit and ready for the final day. My flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. By eating my flesh and drinking my blood, you enter into me and I into you. In the same way that the fully alive Father sent me here and I live because of him, so the one who makes a meal of me lives because of me. This is the bread from heaven. Your ancestors ate bread and later died. Whoever eats this bread will live always. He said these things while teaching in the meeting place in Capernaum. Too tough to swallow. Many among his disciples heard this and said, This is tough teaching. Too tough to swallow. Jesus sensed that his disciples were having a hard time with this and said, Does this throw you completely? What would happen if you saw the Son of Man ascending to where he came from? The Spirit can make life. Sheer muscle and willpower don't make anything happen. Every word I've spoken to you is a spirit word, and so it is life-making. But some of you are resisting, refusing to have any part in this. Jesus knew from the start that some weren't going to risk themselves with him. He knew also who would betray him. He went on to say, This is why I told you earlier that no one is capable of coming to me on his own. You get to me only as a gift from the Father. After this, a lot of his disciples left. They no longer wanted to be associated with him. Then Jesus gave the twelve their chance. Do you also want to leave? Peter replied, Pastor, to whom would we go? You have the words of real life, eternal life. We've already committed ourselves, confident that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus responded, Haven't I handpicked you, the twelve? Still, one of you is a devil. He was referring to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. This man, one from the twelve, was even then getting ready to betray him. Chapter 7 Wow, that was so invigorating. Before I go into my comments, let me finish up comments here from you. Uh, Lady K says, thank you for always sharing with honesty and vulnerability. Thank you, Lady K. Thank you, too. We are all family here. You guys make me feel safe here. That's why. <laughs> why are you laughing? Um, Miss um, Shogo says, Russia go! Welcome. Good song yesterday, Woman of God. Really? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That team should work on a song together. Calgary will light up. It's going to be like the Michael Jackson, We Are the World. <laughs> Good 
Okay, no secular talk on cover to cover. It's gonna be like I don't know. Have gospel people come together to do a song like that? Which one? Kirk Franklin and some people. I don't know. Anyways, thank you, Brushigo, for that comment. Pastor Crown says the law of addition. A lesson in servanthood. John six three to fourteen. As Jesus fed five thousand with one five thousand people with one small basket of food, the, the disciples learned another lesson in serving others. Jesus allowed the disciples to participate in this miracle. They served the food and it multiplied. Mm. Through this experience, Jesus was beginning to reproduce his ministry and his followers. He he, he taught that a pupil becomes like his teacher. Oh, this is um, this is Mondel TV. I love your consistency. Thank you so much. Great Grace Mama. Thank you so much. Let me give a shaker for you. Oh, oh, oh my God. Praise God. You know, this is amazing. You know, I love this, this comment by Dr. Crown where she says, made them participate in the miracle they served the food and it multiplied is the more we serve in the house of god is the more we serve our communities is the more we serve that we are multiplied i used to say this thing in university you know like then we found out that the people that were even doing very well more effective in school were people that had so many responsibilities can you imagine so you now say oh no i'm not able to do this and that let me just cut down on some of my responsibilities but you just find out that you lays that time gisting with your friends but when you have like, like a strict schedule i have this i have that i have this i have you find you're more effective you're able to fit more things so as we serve we are multiplied father we thank you because you help us serve more thank you thank you so much mondial tv says amen amen and so i was looking into the book of chapters john chapter six so this one is also loaded. I think the reason why that John did not die, even though they put him in hot oil, was because he, he was so knowledgeable about the life of God. You know, I was already seeing sneak previews of it in, in chapter 5, but in this chapter 6, he went all out. I don't know if other gospels covered it the way he did, but he spoke about this eternal life more than the rest eternal life you know john 3 16 there's everlasting life there there is no you know paragraph or something he won't sneak in the life of god that cannot be quenched the life of god the life of god that cannot be distinguished is that the word distinguished that's you can't extinguish this thing <laughs> It, that cannot be extinguished the life of god that cannot be snuffed out that cannot be hid it cannot be hid it can't put that life this is the light of men the life of god so first miracle of bread mm -hmm. so they said he asked philip this to stretch philip's faith he said why can we buy food for these people god is asking you a question right now child of god to stretch your faith Maybe he's asking you about, I don't know, mortgage or asking you about what do you think about this or this career or this business or this, I don't know, this new education or this, you know, re even relationship. God might be asking you these questions to stretch your faith. He's asking you, what do you think, my child? What do you think? And then you'll be like, whoa, 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 hold up, hold up. 200 silver pieces will even be enough. Like, I have nothing. This, what I have is not going to cut it. What I have is not going to do it. But see, someone said, we have, <laughs> it's like, I'm asking you, do you have $2 billion? It, the way I've been calling billion these days, hmm, people watch out to this cover to cover. Billions are coming our way. Someone say amen. So I said, it's like someone asking you about $2 billion and then you're like, I have $100, $100 here or I have $50 here. <laughs> that is faith. Because faith the size of a mustard seed, that $50 can multiply. And that is what Jesus does. 
He is great at multiplying. He is great at multiplying. There is this tape by, yes, it was a cassette tape that I listened to by Miles Monroe, Dr. Miles Monroe, blessed memory. He said, what you need is a fruit. And then, so you have a seed, but the seed has to become a fruit. Now you have to, um, he said, be fruitful. So it, he was preaching from Genesis 128. Am I right? I just quoted a scripture off the top of my head. Genesis 128. Is that a correct scripture? Oh, Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'm just saying Genesis 1, 28. Hey, I got it. This is my first time just throwing out a scripture and it's, it's spot on. And I'm reading from King James from my phone and it says, God bless them and God said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So this man of God, Miles Monroe, has a tape about be fruitful. I think I saw it um, some weeks ago on YouTube again, but I remember that tape. I listened to it like 32 times <laughs> in my NYSC. So this, he said, be fruitful. You have a fruit. Now multiply. Multiplication is a divine act. Multiplication is a divine. In, in fact, even in, in reproduction and biology, it's a wonder how God multiplies things. And that's how God is multiplying us. Amen. God is multiplying every single one of us, every single one of us listening to this, every single one of us sharing this. God is multiplying us. So he said, have a fruit, multiply it, and then replenish means if you multiply it and then it's running out of stock, replenish and then subdue means be the best in your niche. And then that's how you have dominion. And dominion means you are the first person that comes to mind when they think of that niche. I don't know. I just summarized a one hour tip in that. So we should watch that tip. But yeah. It starts with the fruit. You have something that can be multiplied. That's why there's this song. What's that you have in your hand? I can't use it. If you're willing to lose it, take the little you have and make it grand. I am El Shaddai. And now more than supply your needs, your needs. So God asks Moses, what is in your hand? There is something we have in our hand. There's something we can do. There is a fruit we have that God can use. God can bless. God can multiply. So they were like, oh, how did they, this is insignificant. <laughs> In the grand scheme of things, five loaves of bread. We're talking 5,000 people and you're saying you have five loaves of bread. Like who says this? But thank God for that little seed that we have. God is going to multiply it. Now, next thing he says, make the people sit down. Someone spoke about this too. It's always great to be in a place of rest when you want to receive. Just relax, just chillax, just enjoy, just be happy. And then... Trust God to bring it to you. Make the people sit down. Are you standing up? Are you pacing up and down? Are you, you know, fretting and anxious? Make the people sit down. God is telling us, sit down, relax. I am serving you up. I'm cooking it up. It's coming. Amen. Amen. And then they sat down in a nice carpet, green grass place. It just reminds me of Psalm 23, where it says, He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. God is leading us into wide open spaces, beautiful sceneries and greeneries. Hallelujah. And then what did Jesus do? He took the bread and gave thanks. We got to give thanks. Every time, anywhere, anyhow, any who, give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. We have to give thanks every time. Jesus took the bread. So when you have that food, thank him that I have something. I have something to offer. I have a fruit. And then 
gave it to those who were seated. So guess what? If you were standing, you didn't get it. If you were pacing, you didn't get it. If you were fretting, you didn't get it. We receive from a place of rest. God give us that rest. We enter his rest. Hallelujah. Now said, ah. then he said, um, he did the same with the fish and we they ate as much as they wanted. Look here, be joyful. Eat as much as you want. Well, not for someone like me that's trying to watch my weight. <laughs> but yeah, we eat, eat. God wants us to be satisfied. God wants us to be happy. God wants us to eat. Just by his children, he delights in our delight. He delights in our joy. Hallelujah. And then they had leftover. We pray for leftover. We pray for leftover, like surplus. That is, is not, oh, we are living from hand to mouth. We can meet our bills. We can just, you know, we're just shaving. To, we pray for surplus. We receive surplus. In the name of Jesus, we receive surplus. Hallelujah. Nothing is wasted. Hallelujah. And then the people realized <laughs> That God was working among them. No, 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 no. If there was someone like me, I know I would definitely realize. Like I'm like, yes, God. This is a prophet for sure. <laughs> someone in the in the live audience said the bread prophet, <laughs> the food, the food prophet, not food prefect, food prophet. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this is a prophet for sure. Food prophet. Who wouldn't love a food prophet? I remember my grandmother, she used to have this fellowship in her home. It was once a week, and it's just a non-denominational fellowship. Mostly children and teenagers came. Why? Because my grandmother would cook. Like every week was a different hot meal. <laughs> it was the food piping hot, fresh food. Why wouldn't her fellowship grow? Every week she serves up food. <laughs> she was the food fellowship. She was a food prophet. Anyways. So this is so good. Like, mm -hmm. Jesus saw their enthusiasm. And they were going to make him king. Can you imagine? Okay. And he slipped off. Jesus is good at escaping. <laughs> and you can just imagine Jesus like, eh, eh, dodging, dribbling. He slipped off and went back to be by himself. Wow. Jesus, Jesus was very disciplined. I like this. <laughs> Anyways, so now... He, Disciples were on their way, and then a huge wind blowing. Sometimes things just pop out of nowhere, like a storm, like a wind, and just huffs and puffs. But when Jesus is on the boat, or even by nearby walking on the water, Jesus was walking on the water near the boat, and they were scared. What, what were they scared of? Were they scared of the wind? Were they scared of a ghost walking on water? Well, he said, it's me. It's me. It's all right. Don't be afraid. Jesus is always so reassuring. We have to talk like him. It's all right. Don't be afraid. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, wow. And then in no time, they were, you know, when Jesus is in your boat, there's speed. Someone say Speed. In no time, they reach the place. In no time, we are reaching our destination in Jesus' name. We thank God for speed in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now the crowd started looking for him. They're like, and Jesus, you know, challenged them. You are looking for me not because of God. You are looking for me because of free food. That is so me. That is so us. Why wouldn't we, you know, like God have mercy on us? Let us seek God for God. Let us seek his heart, not his hand. I know I'm always the one here, up here, talking about material blessings and all. But yeah, it's so good to seek God's heart and love him for him, not the things he gives, but for him himself. Because my mom used to give this analogy. She says something like, it's just like, a very wealthy guy marrying like a cinderella story marrying a poor girl and then he's like oh i want i don't know what are the designers i'm not really into design bugatti is it bugatti i don't know i want i don't know what this is givenchy 
I'm churning out words here. Help me. Designer. She's like, oh, I want this and I want that. And I, But all she needs to do is to love this guy that married her because he married her. Everything he owns is hers, especially if she's married in the, in the region of Quebec, <laughs> Montreal. <laughs> Yes, I just got my certification, so I know these laws now. So if you are married in Quebec, it's irrevocable that your spouse gets everything you own. You can't, you can't go and change it. Even if you divorce, can you imagine? So yes, so let's say they were married in Quebec. <laughs> let's say they were married in Quebec, Montreal. Yeah, uh-huh. So... Everything he has is hers. So why is she like bickering or like, oh, I need this. Oh, I need this. I need this diamond chain and I need this and I need that. No, all she needs to do is focus on loving this guy or reciprocating his love. Right. Mm. I just want to check if I'm still on. <laughs> yep, I'm on. So let's look for God for God. Not for what we can get, not for the things he offers, not for the bread, not because he feeds us for free and he does. Oh, God is amazing. He's great at feeding us for free. <laughs> but let's love him for him. Yeah, praise God. Then I'm going to move on to bread of life. Hey, I feel like praying Fred Hammond here. Dum, dum, dum. Bread of heaven. No, he started with bread of life. Send down from glory. Oh, so he is the bread of life. Ah, John, God bless you for these words. Don't waste your life. Don't waste your energy striving for perishable food. Work for life food. Food, you know, there's this um, a, a mythological or, or how do I put it? There's this proverbial we don't know if it's true or not, fountain of youth or something you drink. It's, it's not celestial, ecclesial water. You drink it and you don't, you're just like youthful and young for life. This is what Jesus is offering and much more. In fact, I'm just using that as an, analo as an analogy because what Jesus offers is not just preserving the body, it's preserving the soul preserving the spirit hallelujah and he's like then they're like yes give us this bread <laughs> now says sign up sign up now they say okay you know what just give us a clue because after all moses fed fed us and he's like you know what moses own those people that ate it still died but this one the real bread that comes down from heaven. And they're like, give us this bread. <laughs> I am the bread of life. I'm so happy when we do communion in church. I think we're going to have communion this morning. We hunger and thirst no more when we have that bread. Hallelujah. Praise God. And then he speaks about eternal life. what do we do this is what my father wants that anyone who sees the son and trusts who he is and does and aligns with him will enter real life eternal life eternal life eternal life eternal life so my part is to put them on their feet alive and whole we are alive I am bread. Ah, uh, they said just I argue. What is this guy saying? He now even back down. He's like, I'm telling you, you need to eat my flesh and drink my blood. You need to eat my flesh and drink my blood. And then you have life. So Moon, you know, is very powerful to reinforcing that life of God in us. But more so is the spirit of it. The communion is just a symbol, right? But the spirit of it, that the life of God, the same power that rose Jesus from the dead is in us. 
Jesus is alive in us. So we live. We have that resurrection power in us. And yeah, some people couldn't grasp it. Some people might not understand it. Even till today, you really need the Holy Spirit to, to, to teach you. And even it, it might not be unfolded or, 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 or laid out in one breath or in one teaching or in one look. We might need to keep looking and keep searching and keep learning to really understand the life that is in us. I think John was so aware of this love of God, of this life of God, that they put this John in hot oil and he did not die. <laughs> they took him, they, they had to just give up and take him to the island of Patmos. There is a way we will be so full of the life of God that it is real. I heard one time that Benin had a plane crash and he didn't die. He survived and then he rushed to look for his wife. His wife was unconscious. And he just touched her and she, she woke up too. But he, he survived with a scratch. His wife maybe had some minor injuries. But he survived without a scratch. The life of God. We are so convinced, so full of it. And we know it. And we express it. Hallelujah. And then he said, you know. Okay, and I was speaking last, in the last chapter about every word he speaks is spirit and life. As we hear, as we are hearing this word, the life of God is 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 being how do I put it? Is being fed. Like just imagine a flame that is just being fanned and it's becoming a huge flame. And, and you know how Jeremiah said, "Your word is like fire in my bones." Until it's so much in us. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he said, "You can't do this on your own." I'm looking for that place. Is those the father that's it here? This is why I told you earlier that no one is capable of coming to me on his own. You get to me only as a gift from the father. So even the fact that we are here in cover to cover is a gift from God. The fact that we are here listening to God's word is a gift from God. It's not by our strength, it's not by our own desire or will, it's his will, and he is the one both to will and to do of his good pleasure. He gives us the will. He gives us the desire and he makes it possible. Hallelujah. Oh, wow. Thank you all for joining me today. Of course, some people left. Some people couldn't do it. But we are not of them that leave. We're like, Peter, who should we go to? You have eternal life. Like John is saying this eternal life. I'm going to start counting how many times he says life and eternal life here. And he says love a lot. He says love and life a lot because God is love. And God gives us life. God is life. God is our very life. Praise God. I'm just going to go to the comments now. Thank you, everyone. Okay, I stopped here in the comment section. Teacher, Luke 6, uh, 40. When we add value by serving others, it keeps adding to those on the earth. And I dare add to this, it adds to us ourselves because it's more blessed to give than to receive. Have you seen you did something for someone, but you, you are more happy than it, you that were the receiver? It's more blessed to give. Author Frank Damasio notes how adding value, of course, father to son to leader. Praise God. Lady K says, God knows what we are capable, God knows what we are going to do, yet he tests us. Mm. He was testing Philip, for he already knew what he was going to do. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. He he does this. He does this. Just want to know. You know how the Bible says they said took them to through the wilderness to know their heart, to know what is in our heart. God told Abraham, Give me your son, sacrifice him. Not that he wanted to kill Isaac, but he's like, Now I know. Do you understand? So someone used to say life is a test. That was in um, this book. This book. Purpose-driven life. The, the man that says life is a test, life is a trust, life is a some other things, but I remember life is a test. So sometimes it's it's really my husband always says, Pastor Moses always says, it's not about what happens to you, is by how is what is what 
you respond with is how you respond so what happens is a test to see what is really in your heart because i always say this it's like sponge when you put the sponge in oil if there's any pressure is what is in it that comes out. If it's palm oil, it comes out. If it's coconut oil, that's what comes out. If it's water, that's what comes out. So when there's any pressure or any test or anything from the exterior, what we the most important thing is what we are giving out. Because what we give out shows what's in our heart. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So probably this test is just to express what is in us or in Philip in this case. Joshua Lundio. <laughs> Welcome to Canada, man of God, Joshua. How are you enjoying the winter? So Joshua is in town for Cover to Cover family. If you guys want to snag, snap, whatever, touch him in the flesh, he's in town briefly. So when he came also with the time difference, I just saw that he wasn't on at a certain time. So I said, okay, I'm standing for my brother. So Joshua says, I am with you. My alarm <laughs> my alarm was wrong due to the time change and my change of environment. I understand. You don't need to explain. I got you, bro. Good morning, CTC family. Yeah. Just that I, I also should have been on standby earlier, but um, yeah, I was sleeping. If not for the Lord has blessed us, man of God. The Lord has blessed us. Um with someone that stands the watch so that this cover to cover will not drop. And I just want to say a special God bless you to Dr. Crown. She would call Sonia. When we were, when, where were we? Went to Liverpool. She would call Sonia, call Lady K so early in the morning to see, ensure that it works. If my lamb, if I snooze my lamb, she's like, there is nobody on the, the fire on the altar must not go out. <laughs> She, she's guarding this so precious and god bless you god preserve you for us we're going to make you a, a cover to cover provost anyways we are thinking of doing an awards night you guys for cover to cover you guys pray about it think about it we're thinking we should celebrate and talk about everyone that is making it work lady k here says oh hi prince yes hi prince joe <laughs> you should see him he looks like he looks like uh, the dragon prince <laughs> No, no, I mean, there is actually a cartoon like that. <laughs> I don't mean any shade. I mean, with this hair. <laughs> Lady K said, time change caused confusion. I know they did. Amen to billions. Yes, so amen. <laughs> Lady K says, of course, you got a smart woman of God. Which one was this? Which one? And he said, Chai, I, I vo hear voice now. God is also... <laughs> <laughs> Lady K, uh, Lady K, I've told you to come and be my manager. Dr. Crown says, yeah, from father to son, okay, she's concluding what she was saying. To leader, from the father to the son, to the leader, my father is working. I myself am working. Leaders are to do the work. Exactly. Amen. Uh, Josh says, Joshua Elonja says, I believe Jesus flesh and blood is a spiritual dimension. <laughs> I always love all these your esoteric narrations and relations. I'm so happy. Which is to receive Jesus flesh bread, word to build faith and allow the Holy Spirit's blood power to flow in and through us in all aspects of our lives. Amen. I love this. Lady K says, with Jesus in the boat. I don't know the song. Can you imagine? I can smile at the stuff. Oh, with Jesus in the boat. Oh, wait. It's coming to me. I can smile at the storm. I can smile at the storm. Smile. Hey, help somebody in the live studio. <laughs> Do you know the songs? Do you know the song? Anyways, I'm coming. I'm going to I'm gonna phone your friend now. I'll do what they're doing. Who wants to be me? I'll phone your friend for help. Do you know the song? They're not responding. Dr. Crown says, acts, and she just gives scriptures. The leaders must judge. God is the light. I am the light of the world. She gives more scriptures. You know, we have to walk in the light. The Father teaches. Um, leaders are to teach teachers leaders are teachers leaders are light 
Our leaders are teachers. Mm -hmm. Lady K says, oh, Lady K is going to sing it for me. Oh, oh, thank you. Sing the song, please. Lady K, are you there? You're muted. Okay, let's sing the song. With Jesus in the boat, we can smile at the storm. Smile. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. With Jesus in the boat, we can smile at the storm. Smile at the storm. Smile at the storm. With Jesus in the boat, we can smile at the storm. As we're sailing home, let's go. Sailing, sailing, sailing. We're sailing home. With Jesus in the boat, we can smile at the storm. As we're sailing home. So it's a fun disco song. And then... So when you sing it, then you start dropping some words. So it, it, it sounds like with, in the boat, we can smile at the storm, smile at the storm. And then the next time you sing it, you go with, in the, we can smile at the storm. <laughs> so oh, the, I love those kind of songs. At the time you finish, it goes, yes. we, the, we can, at the, at the, at the, yeah, <laughs> there you go. Sunday I school. love it. Thank you. Bye. Check in with you. Thank you. Oh, wow. The key. The key is amazing. Oh, Jesus in the boat. They can smile at the storm. Smile at the storm. Smile at the storm. In the boat. They can smile at the... Smile at the... <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much. That made my morning. That made my morning. <laughs> Lady cases, I swear what came out of my mouth yesterday. <laughs> Sorry, she put a crying emoji, but I laughed. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> Lady K, I used the S word when I was driving. And I just I just got my license, I told you guys this year. So imagine me cursing at another driver <laughs> with that. Why are you so slow? <laughs> Or something like that. I can't remember the word I used, but I did swear. I'm like, oh my God, am I going to be one of those foul mouthed drivers? Is this what I'm becoming? <laughs> Is this what I'm... But I was so pained, right? <laughs> I, I feel your pain. Let's pray for forgiveness. Father, thank you. Help us to say the right words all the time. Amen. <laughs> and Lady Kiss is with really Prince Joyce here in Calgary. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Say so thank you, Heziva. Thank you, Provost. Yes, thank you, Provost. God bless you, woman of God. Thank you all. May we be pass whatever test God brings our way today. Amen. And it will be a great day. Amen. 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 And and, and Pastor Cron says, as the Father gave His Son, the Son gave His life. Leaders lay down their lives. The Father is perfect. The Son is perfect. Leaders are. Pastor Mary says, amen to passing the test. Amen, amen, amen. Leaders are to be perfect and set the example. Thank you. Kawalia, yes. She came here and singing, singing, singing. She did great. All right, thank you, everyone. Oh, my God, quarter to seven. We are going to church now. Love you all. I'm just going to play our outro now. And we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye bye. I'm gonna sustain till he starts singing. I stretch out my hand, I touch you now. I stretch out my hand, I touch you now. Oh, I stretch out my hand, I touch you now. I stretch out my hand, I stretch out my hand. Somebody say, I stretch out my hand, I touch you. I stretch out my face. Hey. Stretch out my hand. Stretch out my face. Hey.